Oh, good morning, everybody. I want to thank God for His grace and His mercy. May His name be praised forever and ever. Amen. This is another day as we are about to learn the Word of God. I will be sharing the same message uh, that is tribulation uh, by the grace of God. And I know the Lord will speak His word to us and His holy name will be praised forever and ever. Amen. Um, let's pray. Father, we thank you. We pray as we are going into your world this time. Speak your mind to us. Open our eyes and understanding. For believers, give us the motivation to please you, to glorify you. To the unbelievers, Lord, open their eyes to see the reason why they needed to be saved. Thank you, Father, for everything you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, I want to thank God for His grace upon our life today. Uh, may His name be praised forever and ever in Jesus' name. Uh, we want to continue in today's uh, teaching that we'll be doing all this while. Uh, that is tribulation. And I pray the Lord will speak His mind to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, as you know, today is the lesson for uh, I want to thank God for those who have been following us on Facebook and on our YouTube. Uh, let's continue to be watching, and I know the Lord continue to bless us uh, with all these spiritual blessings as we get to know more and more about what will happen in future. So, today we want to look at um, Tribulation Lesson 4, uh, focusing on the rapture for today's teaching. Uh, which is going to be the last event in the dispensation of the church, which I believe the Lord is going to use these particular events to gather all his children across the universe for his own sake and for his own glory. So, we wish to see the Lord Jesus Christ and we want to see him come again. Don't forget when he came, he came as a lamb. And as a lamb, uh, he came to die for us. As you can see, the picture of the lamb being slain for the redemption of mankind. That's what the Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 29. That behold the lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. So Jesus died for the entire world. So the first advent, the first coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is for redemption purpose. Is for redemption purpose. Is for everyone in this world to have the grace to be saved. And he has made that provision today. So for those of all that are saved, glory to God. For those who are yet to be saved, there is a lot of ample opportunity for you to place your faith in Christ, believing that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to this world, died on the cross, suffered, and was buried, and after the third day, he rose from the dead to show that death has no power over him, but for the purpose of mankind, he needs to die for our salvation. This is God's requirement. That is a sinless man, that God needs to become man to die for our sin. Since that uh, requirement has been met by God to deliver and to save mankind, as at today, now all mankind has the, the privilege to become children of God, to be saved because once you are saved you become children of god a child of god so see the second aspect of this picture you see that there's a lamb that is slain but there is a, a big animal called the 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 the, 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 the king of animal that is lion so see what the bible in the book of revelation chapter 5 verse 5 we say is behold the lion of the tribe of judah the root of David, Revelation 5, verse 5. Uh, you can see these two aspects 
is a uh, other other part of our lord jesus christ he came as a lamb but he's still coming again but the time is coming here is coming to rule the entire world for one thousand years so so the second coming of our lord jesus christ is very very important but before that second coming we have what we call them um, the last event in the dispensation of the church and that is rapture and that is rapture see what the book of malachi chapter 4 verse 1 says behold for behold the day cometh that shall born as an hoven and all the proud ye and all that do wickedly shall be stubble and the day that cometh shall burn them up see it the lord of hosts that it shall leave them neither root nor branch so that's a day is coming a day is coming that the wrath of god will be felt we're talking about the tribulation and it's going to be for seven good years where the wrath of god will come in form of seal judgment in form of trumpet judgment and in form of bow judgment and these are judgment that the world we experience who are the people that we experience? these are the unsaved those who are here to place their faith in christ you are among those that will experience this but if you don't want to experience the evil that the world we experience the best choice to make is to place your faith in christ because of what he has done for you and that is a requirement for salvation another word for faith is trust another word for trust is rely so you can rely on what christ has done it's not a myth it's an historical event that can be seen in every historical house that is that jesus christ came to this world to die for uh everyone and he was nailed on the cross he died and he resurrected again the firstborn from the dead. So, behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Before the tribulation will occur, he's going to send a savior, and the savior is to redeem us. And let's read verse 6, which says, And he shall turn the heart of the father to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers lest i come and smite and smite the earth with a curse malachi chapter 4 verses 5 to 6. so because of a god merciful act because of his gracious act is sending a savior to redeem us the savior has come that is now left for those who are yet to be saved to place their faith in the Savior, Jesus Christ, who came to die for our sin. Now, he who testified to this thing, see it, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Revelation chapter 22, verse 20. So, there is a lot of many messages, prophecy about the second coming of our lord jesus christ but before then we are going to have what we call rapture then i just as we said previously the two aspects of messiah that is he came as a redeemer the you the lamb of god and he is going to come as the lion of the tribe of judah so i want us to know as a lamb is a bit is a vicarious sacrifice and as a king is a victorious sov uh, sovereign ruler who is going to rule the entire world so we need to understand that now why do you think or, or why do you think jesus need to come back or do you think jesus need to come back again yes he need to come back looking what is happening in our environment Looking at what is happening in our community. Looking at what is happening in our villages. Looking at what is happening in our cities. Looking at what is happening in our states. In our region. In our, in our country. In our continent. In the world entirely. Globally. Looking at what is happening tells us that uh, the world cannot be 
totally ruled by men because of their selfish ambitions and personal desire that is jeopardizing the, the entire growth of the nation. So, because of this, we need a, 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 someone that will rescue the world from, from destruction, from what we are experiencing today. When you say what is happening, what everybody can experience today globally is the inflation, rise in the price of every commodity and services because of the entire global mess. So, you can see, even because of that, a lot of people have lost their job. A lot of people could not afford to live in their house. They have lost their home, lost their property, and a lot of things. Jesus needs to come back again. But the first aspect of his coming is going to come. Is going to come to take his children home. Let's see the first reason here. Because the scripture repeatedly predicts that Jesus is coming back again. The scripture is the word of God. I will totally believe in the authority of the word of God. So we believe that the scripture is true. And everything that be written in the scripture is so perfect as we can see that of the approximately 333 prophecies concerning Christ. Only 109 of them were fulfilled in the first coming. That was the first coming when he came as a lamb. He came to die for our sin, leaving the remaining 224 yet to be fulfilled in the second coming. So you can see that uh, the second coming almost close to double of the, the, the first prophecy of the first coming that is going to come. And the, 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 the part of his coming is going to be the rapture when the church will be taken up to meet him. And the other one is after tribulation period when he's coming to rule as the tribe, lion of the tribe of Judah is coming to rule the world for 1,000 years. So there are a total of 1,527 Old Testament passages referring to Christ's second coming. Why in the New Testament we have 333 verses uh, of this prediction? So you can say that it's not a joke that Jesus Christ is coming. All this thing is written in the Old Testament and the New Testament books. Okay, let's move ahead. So we can see a particular thing in the book of Jeremiah that actually rejected the message of God. What he does that he came with with a knife, a pen knife, after reading the word of God to him, he caught it, doesn't want to see it. And that is what is happening in our own present day today. People get angry just hearing the word Bible. People get angry because they don't want to listen to the truth. And people are angry because it is God's word. And this is what the world is expressing today. When we look at the event that is taking place in the world, any nation that rejects God, irrespective of the name of the nation, how popular the nation is, how powerful the nation is, God's punishment will come upon that nation. Apart from them being saved or not saved, because that's where God do intervene into the affairs of man by putting regulations into the system that is they will know that this is the hands of god so we should not behave like this king did uh, by destroying the word of god by rejecting the word of god because of his personal gain and at the end of the day you know what happened to the king the enemy came and destroyed and killed the king because lack of faith in God and destroying God's word and don't, not putting his total trust in God, putting his trust in his might, in his wealth, in his uh, wisdom, and all these things <laughs> make us understand that without God, we are nothing. Anything we have today and anything we become in future, everything, glory goes to God not to man even though you are a king even though you are a priest even though you are you are you are in the politics or anywhere you find yourself in this world without you 
your life is going to be in shambles. Firstly, you, are, you, you, you reject the salvation that God has offered. All these informations are in the word of God. Then, see in our own uh, word today, we have some of the prophecy being fulfilled today. And we have some people that are see doubting it. Could that be true? That is the people in the world, they are looking at this. But it is a proof. It's a proof that the word of God is speaking the truth to us. Israel as a witness. They are star witness. There was a time that they are lost. They have lost their land. But in 1948, uh, a little land was restored back to them. But thank God for today, they are taking back part of what belongs to them. Though they will not be able to take everything as prophesied because they are the time for their uh, taking the entire land that God has designed for them will be uh, the millennial reign. What they are experiencing now is just a partial uh, fulfillment of God regarding the children of Israel. Now, don't forget that um, God's covenant with Israel still remains irrespective of their rejection. So don't forget the Abrahamic covenant, which goes in three aspects, the land covenant that they are still struggling with today, the David covenant uh, that God made covenant with David, and a new covenant that all of them will know him just by seeing them, and all their sins will be forgiven, and that is the covenant that God has with them, and that was during the time, that was during the time of um, uh, the, the, the Mosaic law, and the era and dispensation of Israel before Jesus Christ actually came. Currently, we are in the church age, and between the church age and the kingdom is time for the, there will be a time for tribulation, and we should know that that is the time that the wrath of God will be felt very, very well, which other phrase or call it uh, the great tribulation that the world will experience. Now, let us say, why do you think Jesus needs to come back again? Because the covenant to the children of Israel, you can see about three covenants here, the land covenant, the uh, Davidic covenant, and the new covenant that God had with the children of Israel. Now, let's go to this wonderful picture to remind ourselves. Currently, uh, uh, before the church started, uh, the children of Israel, the nation of Israel, both the north and the southern kingdom, northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, they have experienced, uh, what we call, the 69 weeks of divine discipline of God. When this, each of this week is seven years, when you multiply 69 times 7, it's going to give you 483 years which the children of Israel have been in bondage, they have been in exile, and they have been scattered across the world because the rejection of God's law, because according to that timing and duration of their uh, dispensation, God gave them rules and regulation, but they failed, they sinned against God, and they worship idols instead of worshiping God, and with their various sin of rejecting God, because if you obey the law, you'll be blessed, and if you disobey, you'll be cursed. So part of the divine discipline that God has designed for the children of Israel is to send them away from their land, taken by their enemies, and that has passed. Now, the church is the one that actually stopped the continuation of this uh, divine discipline that God has designed for the children of Israel. You can see 69 plus 1 will give us 70. That we call Daniel 70 week that the children of Israel will pass through the that divine uh, discipline and uh, uh, discipline that God has designed for them and many of them will die of disease, many of them will die of war, many of them will die of hunger and all this thing is happening and that's why we have people just going against the children of Israel for no reason because of what they are passing through. So currently we are in the church age now uh, but before them, by the time you ask 69 plus 1 we give you 70 weeks that is 70 times 7 that is 490 
490 uh, years that the children of Israel will pass through the divine discipline. And what is that telling us? Even though you are not children of Israel today, as a nation that rejects God, because by the time we go to the biblical historical account, we are able to realize no matter how big, how powerful the nation is, I will make an example of the, of the empire, the Babylonian empire, that is the biggest empire of all, that God used to discipline other nations that reject God. Even Babylonian Empire, it's not that they are perfect, but they are even unbelievers. They rejected God, but God used Babylonian Empire as an instrument to discipline other nations. Now, as powerful as Babylonian Empire was, God still destroyed Babylonian Empire when they sinned against God beyond the level that God is using to discipline and punish every nation in the world. So don't say my nation will not experience God's punishment or God's discipline. If your nation and the people at the ends of our fear are not doing the will of God in preserving souls and life of the people, in meeting the basic amenity mess of them, in promoting God in everything they are doing, if your nation is not observing that, then you should know that the sin of that nation will continue to increase in the sight of God. When it goes beyond the brim, then the punishment from God will visit such a nation, no matter how powerful such nation is. Nation that, did, that rejects God. Nation that rejects God, no matter how powerful that nation is. No matter how powerful any nation you know in the world is, whether in African continent, whether in Europe, whether in Asia, whether in Australia, whether in, uh, in America or South America, anywhere such nation is that reject God, no matter how powerful they are, listen to what I'm saying, no matter how powerful they are, divine discipline and punishment of God will surely locate such a nation. So don't brag her. Uh, Nothing can happen to us. Go and read the history of Babylon. Especially you can go to the book of Jeremiah. Start from Jeremiah chapter uh, 46 to the end. You will realize that God predicted the fall of Babylon. And it actually, it actually occurred. Babylon was so powerful to the extent that they cover many continents in the world. During their era, Babylonia era, and the Babylon is the one that captured the supper kingdom of Israel. They captured it to tell you how powerful they are. But God now said that He's going to punish Babylon, that a nation from the north will destroy uh, the Babylonian Empire, that all their army will be killed and be destroyed. God's warning. Even we are discussing about the children of Israel here, according to the biblical information we are teaching. But the biblical principle that could be applied to every nation. If a nation as a head or group head is listening to this message, know that if your nation reject God, no matter how powerful your nation is, no matter, no matter how influential your nation is, there is a pending judgment of God that is coming. If the nation rejects the knowledge of God, the will of God, the mind of God, don't forget the purpose why God placed people in, in the head of a fear of every nation is for the leaders to preserve lives, to protect their property, to ensure that things are going normally. But by the time evil is happening, killing, destruction, and when the, 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 the leaders are incapable of managing their fears, then God will intervene. God will intervene. God intervene when there is too much of sin. God intervene 
when leaders disobeyed God. God intervened. God intervened. So this is just a, 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 a little uh, information for our current leaders across the world today. Now, let's go back to our Daniel 78 week. So, uh, 69 week has gone, it has passed. Then, this is a future week that we refer to tribulation time. It's going to be seven years divided into two. Uh, the first half is going to be three and a half years, the second half is going to be three and a half years. In the middle of the three of, of, the, of the tribulation, devil in form of Antichrist. Disguising as a peace leader, will showcase himself to be worshipped. Then the eyes of Israel will be opened. Then, before them, we are currently in the church age. Now, Jesus Christ came to the world, died for us. They shed his blood. Then, what happened? Then the church began. Now the church began. What happened in AD 70? The, the temple of Solomon was was destroyed, but don't forget that in AD 30, uh, 33, what happened? Uh, Jesus entered Jerusalem. That is a triumphant entry where he's being called. Oh, Hosea, Hosanna in the in the eyes. Jesus Christ, son of David, and the same group of people said. To Pilate, crucify him and let his blood be on us and our family. So now, currently, we are still in the age of the church. Currently, this is where we are. The only event the church is expecting is rapture. Where rapture takes place, the last event of the church age, then we are expecting what? Tribulation to begin. So, church age is an obstruction to the continuation of the Daniel 70th week. Once the last person is saved in the church, the rapture will occur. So what is stopping the rapture? The last person is yet to be saved. So it could be you that is still hearing this message. If you are the last person, because God is with numbers, and you know the actual people that will be saved. So once the last person is saved, rapture will occur. And when rapture will occur, what is the meaning of rapture? When the children of God, those who place their faith in Christ, will be caught up to meet the Lord Jesus Christ in the air. So why do we need Jesus Christ to come again? Before the, before the, the millennium, uh, rapture will take place. It's called rapture. Some theologians call it the first phase of the second coming, but some don't want to call it like that. We call it rapture is rapture. So, and what is rapture? Many people are seeing the, 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 the topic of rapture as a, uh, as, a, uh, as a threatening topic. It's not a threatening topic to the believer. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an event of hope. It's an event of joy. It's an event of glory that every believer should, should aim at every second. What is rapture? Rapture is when believer is being transformed from this physical body to a spiritual body. We're going to be given a glorified body. Don't forget when you talk about salvation. Salvation is in three uh, uh, three uh, tenses. The first tense is justification, where we place our faith in Christ. The second tense is a, is the is a sanctification, where believers are expected to live our life to glorify God, and that is where we determine our reward in heaven. Then, the last tense of salvation is called glorification, which is also referring to rapture. In rapture, irrespective of anywhere believer is, why in, the, in, in any part of the world, when the trumpet sound is being blown, then we are going to have believers across the world going up to meet the Lord Jesus Christ in the air. Is a message of joy. It's a message of gladness. But unfortunately, we have some people trying to manipulate what the scripture have already spelled out in white and black. They say rapture is for only those who cannot, who will not sin. They call them sinless believer. There's no sinless believer, my brother, my sister. Every believer will sin, 
and every believer will still sin. Why? Because we still possess the sin nature. And that is the one of the reasons why the same problem will be resolved through our new type of body that will be given to us called a glorified body. A glorified body cannot sin. A glorified body will, will actually resolve the problem of sin. So when rapture takes place, it's a message of hope for everyone that are saved. And how it's going to be is that those who are in Christ, those who are in Christ that have died, if you have a loved one that have died and they are believers in Christ, they will, they will, be, they will, they will be the one to be caught up. They are going to have a transformed body. Then those who are alive like us today that is listening to me will be the, the second face to also rapture. But the Bible says it's going to be in a twinkling of an eye. So in other words, that is a microsecond where we, the believer, we all go to meet the Lord in the air. Even those who have died that are in heaven, we also be raptured to have glorified body. But what type of body do they have now is just a temporary body, or we can call it a celestial body they have now. So the rapture of the church is so important, and that rapture we, we, we is one of the factors that will necessitate the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because after rapture, we have seven years of tribulation. After seven years of tribulation, Jesus Christ is coming to reign for 1,000 years. So let's see what the scripture says in First Thessalonians chapter, 5, chapter 4, verse 13 to 15. We says, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who are falling asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Christ. For these we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. Those who die in Christ, we don't call them those who die, we call them those who are sleeping. Because there will be the false to have a changed body. How do we know? Because they are in Christ. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, if you are in Christ, you are a new creation. And that is what the Lord is saying to us, that rapture will take place, that those who have died, we should not be sorrowful, though we are going to miss them. We should not be sorrowful as we will not see them again because they will still come and have a glorified body to meet the Lord in the head. That's what the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 13 through 18. Which says again from verse 16 says, For the Lord himself will descend, you can see, is the saint from heaven with a shout, with the sound of an archangel, that is angel Michael, and with a trumpet of God, a sound will be blown through the trumpet, and only the believers will hear the sound. It's not going to be a global sound. It's not going to be a sound that everybody will hear. It's a sound that only believers will hear. And the dead in Christ, believers in Christ, will rise first. That's a, the way Jesus has designed the phases of the resurrection of believer and the glorification of believer then verse 70 say then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up that's where the word caught up rapture comes from together with them in the cloud who are them in the cloud those who are dead in christ first rise up first then we that are still alive currently as i when this book was written apostle paul was still alive thinking it's going to be among those who will be alive just like today i'm also thinking i'm among those who will be alive to witness the second phase of the rapture the first phase are those who died in christ the second phase of rapture are believers who are still presently alive 
So we are going to meet the Lord in the hair, that is in the cloud, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. So nothing will separate us from the Lord with this event of rapture that will constant will constantly be in his present verse the last verse. Therefore comfort one another with these words. You must have lost your loved ones, uncle, aunt, father, mother, grandfather, grandmother, your niece, your nephew, your friends, your colleagues, elderly person, people along your your community your environment as long as they are safe be rest assured that the word of god is true that we're going to see them once again this is a message of hope this is a message of hope for everyone don't forget uh, we have various of rapture in history that has occurred the first rapture occurred during the time of early of the creation we have enoch that rapture that is uh, in Genesis chapter 5, the man walked with the Lord and he disappeared. They could not find him. That's the first chapter that will come. The second one was Elijah. Elijah said he doesn't want to die. And God sent uh, uh, a chariot, uh, uh, chariot of horse, a horse, a fire chariot of horse to take Elijah to heaven. The other person that saw this rapture occurring to him uh, is is uh, Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6 he went to heaven but he also returned back then the other person that also saw rapture is Jesus Christ that died and resurrected that's uh, another form of rapture that we are able to see then the one of Philip that is out of Apostle chapter 8 we cannot actually call it a rapture but what happened is that he disappeared and reappeared he disappeared from one community and appeared in another community. That's what occurred to Apostle Philip, one of the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then also we have Apostle Paul have the same experience with Isaiah. You can see Isaiah was raptured and came back. That is, he said that he doesn't know whether in the body or out of the body. Or what he realized that up, oh, he raptured. Isaiah said he saw the throne of God. That is when the rapture took place. Though he came back just like Apostle Paul. That is in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Then the rapture that we the believer are expecting is the normal one. That is going to be the, the end of the church age event. When the rapture will occur. Then during the tribulation we have two witnesses that will come. That is Elijah and Moses will come to the world to witness or perform signs and wonders to be witness about Jesus Christ. And that's going to be part, part of evangelism that God has designed. So the rapture will take place when they will kill them. And after three days, their body will resurrect and go back to heaven. So these are uh, rapture that has occurred. Some is they went and they came. Uh, some partially, just like Philip. So these are different type of rapture that we are able to see in the scripture. So this one gave us a proof. It's not just what is about to happen it has happened previously and it's still going to happen so we have that hope and believe in christ that we will reign with him by the grace of god we are going to end our teaching here today and i know the lord will continue to bless us with this wonderful teaching let us pray father we thank you for this great opportunity telling us that rapture is one of the wonderful grace you have designed for the church age is a message of hope it's a message of hope to those who are saved also it's going to be a message of hope to those who are yet to save but they will place their faith in christ but it's going to be a time of evil event that will occur in the world if people refuse to place their faith in you lord we thank you for opening our eyes to know this information we pray for those who are yet to be saved that you open their eyes to place their faith in christ so that all together we'll be able to rapture with you together in heaven thank you heavenly father blessed be your glorious name in jesus powerful name we pray amen thank you god bless you and i pray the lord continue to use this teaching to minister to every one of us a message of hope a message of uh, motivation through the word of God and I pray the Lord will continue to give us the grace to learn His word more and more. And I want you to love it, share it well with your group in other social media you find yourself. And very soon it's going to be uploaded on YouTube. Try and watch it and send it to your loved one. Thank you. God bless you. 
In Jesus' name, amen.